black people don't surf? Well, a new documentary challenges that stereotype with historical evidence. The first account of surfing in Africa was written in the 1640s by a German merchant traveler, Michael Hammersen. Anytime I get into the ocean, I just feel like I'm blessed, I'm being baptized. And so for me, I just want to share that. I worked in the outdoor industry. As much as I enjoyed it, I never really felt comfortable because there wasn't much representation. I started Intersection as a way to create a safe space and a welcoming space and a fun space and a positive entry point for other women of color who want to learn how to surf. Wade in the Water, a journey into black surfing and aquatic culture, explores the centuries-old tradition of black people surfing. We'll speak with the director of Wade in the Water next. Joining me now is David Mespin, director of Wade in the Water, a journey into black surfing and aquatic culture. David, thank you so much for making the time. This documentary is beautifully shot uh, and it breaks into some stereotypes of whether black people do surf or not. What was it that you wanted to communicate in this documentary and why did you think it was so important to make it? I think telling the story of less known history of black surfing was very important to me, increasing the representation and visibility within, you know, the surf community was very important. And then additionally, it can serve to challenge what you just said, which is the social perception people have of what is a black surfer. There's a stereotype, the blonde guy with blue eyes and really wanted to change that narrative because surfing existed in Africa a thousand years ago. This is part of our culture and it's something we really need to embrace. So it was important for me to historically, you know, know that it existed a thousand years ago in Africa and it's also part of our culture, really breaking that stereotype. And I know I, I remember one of our first conversations about this documentary. I'm curious what's been people's reaction when they first find out that you yourself are a surfer um, and that there is this whole world of black surfers, uh, including what you mentioned, a long history of surfing on the African continent. What's been the reaction from people? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are kind of speechless, always comparing it to the Polynesian story, right? So when we think of surfing, it started in Polynesia and Hawaii, but no one really knows the history of black surfing. The one person that really looked into it is Professor Kevin Dawson, who resides in California, has been doing a study for over 10 years. And that story, when I heard it, it changed my life. I've been surfing for quite a long time. I didn't know that. It made me embrace the culture and surfing. And I think that's what it's doing to the rest of the surf community, which is like feeling confident going out in the water, knowing this is part of your culture and embracing it. And then for people who didn't know that, it's really a surprise. Everyone is surprised to hear the news. I mean, it's been out there. Dawson published his book a couple of years back, but it's all new because it's documentaries on social media and we're really promoting it. And as you mentioned, there's a long history of it um, and the documentary gets into some of this. Where did the disconnect happen? Where did that stereotype that we've talked about come into uh, play? Yeah, you know what? That's a really good question because the stereotype exists in America, right? When you live in Africa, you're still connected to the water. There's still a bunch of swimmers, surfers on the water. Whereas I think in America, things changed, you know, since, you know, you know slavery period, the enslavers kind of kept African Americans away from the water. You have the Jim Crow era that completely removed African-Americans from beach communities. There's an example in the documentary, for example, the Bruce's Beach in Manhattan Beach. You know, this family ends up establishing this amazing bathhouse and eventually gets taken away with eminent domain. So the idea of African-Americans not connecting to, you know, not being able to swim or be part of the subculture is a stereotype that's been driven by a lot, a lot of it driven in, in America through the civil rights, Jim Crow era, and so forth. So it's it, it, it's unfortunate, 
Um, but I, I think, you know, I'm hoping this documentary will change that narrative. And there's a bunch of other people that are, you know, in the academia and society that are changing that narrative. And a lot of them are in this uh, documentary. I mean, it, it, it like I said, is uh, absolutely beautiful uh, visually and is packed with a lot of information as well. Take us behind the scenes. How difficult was it to get this made? Uh, you know, as as uh, is in the the information about the documentary, it's by a, a lot of black filmmakers. How long did it take? What was the grind of it all? Yeah, no, happy to share that. So for me in particular, I've been surfing for quite a long time. I moved from Ethiopia in the 80s, late 80s, and moved to a small town called St. Augustine. And there I kind of fell in love with the sport of surfing. I didn't even know how to swim. I had to learn how to swim first. And, and there's this connection with Mother Ocean, which is really inspirational. There's tranquility, healing. You know, everyone feels that. It's not just me. Um, you know, Years later, 2011, I moved to, you know, I moved to California to live, and go to school. I meet a group of black surfers called Black Surfers Collective. And that really changed the lens of what it is to be a black surfer, because I felt like I was part of a community after all. And post Black Lives Matter, that's when I felt like this story needs to be told. And that's where I found out the story that surfing existed a thousand years ago. So about a year ago, I started the journey of, you know, documenting the story. And it took, you know, a lot of asking, uh, approaching people I didn't know, approaching people I knew, academia, communities, the organizations that had surfing classes and so forth that could come on board and tell their stories. And in terms of the production, I lucked out. I ended up meeting uh, a brother from East Africa, uh, Bayan Abra, who became the executive producer, he's never done any documentary before. He's an engineer, but he ends up embracing it. He's a surfer as well. He comes on board helping me, you know, making a lot of the connection with the younger surfers. And then Tafari is another Ethiopian who ends up becoming the editor um, in terms of finance. You know, most of it I ended up financing through projects that I worked on. But we ended up getting a lot of support through World Surf League, which is, you know, it's like the NFL of surfing, you can say. They ended up supporting us. Uh, Patagonia surf stores and, um, and you know and their properties became open for us to promote the documentary. We ended up getting you know support from Meta. Uh, Facebook ended up bringing us, doing a screening, and then financially supporting us. And then San Diego State Black Resource Center. So you had you know communities, organizations, and you know, for profits coming in, helping us raise the money to create the documentary. Uh, that sounds very successful to me. It sounds like you guys got a lot of people on board. And it looks like you're also going to Santa Barbara International um, Film Festival. And so, where can people go if they do want to watch the documentary? Yeah, so Santa Barbara International Film Festival will be the first screening, which is in February, February 11th and 12th. And then from there, we come back to Los Angeles at the Pan-African Film Festival, and that is February 18th. And then following that, we'll be back at the Patagonia store in partnership with Surfrider LA. That is the 22nd. And then our partners at San Diego State University, Black Resource, that will be February 23rd. So we'll be pretty busy this February. Yeah, it looks like it. Well, congratulations to the whole team. David Mespin, director of Wade in the Water, a journey into black surfing and aquatic culture. Thank you.